Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples on a rare and lovely, we've been having a few of these, thank God. For late May, the temperature right now is absolutely amazing. We're at like 72. The birds are chirping, but not nearby. Uh, the roosters, I can't hear at all. There's no humidity in the air, and I am loving life. Uh, obviously, you know, summer draws near. By the middle of the day, it'll be 173 in the shade, but at least the mornings still have a little bit of magic something. By the time July rolls around, the mornings are going to suck as bad as the rest of the day. Uh, in fact, they should be sucking now, but they're not, so that's just great stuff. Uh, what I have today is this 2007 Mercedes-Benz S550. Uh, again, one of my all-around favorite cars. Absolutely love them. Uh, uh, this is the W221 series that replaced the W220. I guess that's uh, kind of an obvious leap. Uh, it was a very handsome design from Mercedes. Again, you know, sort of a, a departure. Uh, you know, they really brought back, uh, uh, you know, a higher quality from the drafting table. The 220 was an answer to the 140, which everyone said was over-engineered and ridiculous, even though I love them, and I think a lot of other people do too. Uh, but, uh, you know, so they decontented them a little bit. They simplified them a little bit. And, uh, you know, they're fine, fine cars uh, in their own way, and they're certainly, you know, lovely enough and befitting the S-Class badging, but uh, this 221 really brought it all back and started Mercedes-Benz down, you know, down a path of, okay, the hell with it. We're just going to make these things the way we see fit, and people can like them or not. Uh, you, I just absolutely love the curvature, uh, the body line, the wheel arches, the humps. Again, some people say it looks like a four-door RX-8. That's great. We got slow-moving low-hanging airplanes over there. Probably a big telephoto lens hanging out of the side window. Hopefully he heads off in the other direction. Uh, anyway, maybe they unfairly say it looks like an RX-8. I don't care. I think it looks really nice. I love the curvature on the greenhouse. I love the stubby little rump on it. The, uh, this one has the AMG Sport package, which I quite like the appearance of. It adds uh, kind of special rocker panels, front and rear bumper treatments, uh, big uh, you know AMG wheels, AMG exhaust. Uh, you know, it's a trade-off with the tire and wheel thing. I mean, oh my God, look at this thing rolling in. I mean, you gotta be kidding me. <sighs> I'm not talking about the car either. Anyway, um, where the hell was I? That really threw me for a loop. I can't even look over there, I'm gonna be ill. Uh, the AMG thing, the big wheels and tires, you know, they look great, but obviously you go through tires quicker than you do without the sport package. Uh, you know, a trade-off, so style over longevity or what have you, um, I, I dig it, you know, I, I'd go either way, but the sport package definitely looks nice. Uh, this one's finished in pewter metallic, which is an absolutely lovely color. Uh, so many S's are either silver or black. Uh, it's nice to see one that's a little bit outside the box. Not much, but a little. Uh, by their nature, these things are supposed to be sort of Teutonic and understated. Uh, you see the beautiful big Xenon headlight assemblies up front, the star and the uh, hood, uh, very attractive uh, side slatted grill. Uh, you know, being the sport package, you get that sort of F1 uh, front air dam thing where it sort of simulates the wing on a Formula One car. It looks very, very cool. Uh, this one does have night vision, so you can see there's a little camera up there. Uh, when we get in the car, it's going to be too bright out to show it, which is a shame, but uh, uh, it's pretty neat stuff. The dashboard lights up with a infrared camera like something out of Predator. All right, let's start inside the trunk. So this one has a pretty good uh, option package, so I can just pinch that. Up it comes with power assist. Uh, what the hell is this for? I get my glasses on here. Forgive me, this little thing. Oh, this is for an umbrella. Uh, very nice. So if you want to stuff an umbrella there, that's a good spot for it. Uh, obviously, you get a nice big trunk at an S-Class, as one should. Uh, you'll be able to fit a lot of crap in there. Uh, you do only get one little hang tag for your roadkill. So if you run over a possum or a squirrel, uh, you want to hang it up on the way home. Uh, you know, I think they give you a second hook, but they don't. Uh, otherwise, you could use it for shopping bags or, you know, whatnot that you don't want to have your Campbell suit cans rolling around the back, but uh, it's uh, it's nice they give you that. The original formats, all very lovely stuff. 
find a place here where my detailer doesn't clean. That's a little hidden machine gun compartment, so you can put your uh, your uh, M and P in there, or, you know, whatever. Stuff it in, put the cover down. State trooper might not find it. You also get these little retention nets to put, uh, uh, you know, maybe a Yorkshire Terrier or an infant or something. So uh, anything, it, it very lovely and proper in the back of the trunk. To close it, you just press this guy, and down it goes. We'll have a look under the hood. You hear all the beeping that's going on? It's because this thing has keyless go. So it's trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing or what I want to do. Pull this little T guy out of the grill. This is really a two-handed affair, otherwise you might break something. But um, I've done it before, so I'm you know able to do it. 5.5 uh, liters, 382 horsepower, all very nice. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, for the love of God, honestly, I mean, who's going to buy a car from somebody who looks like that? I mean, where did you even find those shoes? And sleeves, for God's sake, at your age, Marty. At your age. Anyway, I, I, we're just not going to comment on that. 5.5 um, liters, 382 horsepower, 7-speed automatic behind it. Uh, this is a fantastic V8 power plant in this thing. Uh, very, very nice. Nice step up from the earlier 5 liters. They added another 80 or so horse, some more torque, and uh, it is uh, bad to the bone in terms of hammering it. You get all the juice you need out of it. Uh, it does have a dual battery system. That's the starter battery there. It also has a house battery for vehicle functions. You can see the uh, tops of the, um, uh, whatever the hell those things are, the struts for the ABC sport suspension, uh, active body control, airmatic, what have you. And uh, anyway, everything nice and lovely under the hood. Good, good running car. Didn't show you, it has that K40, one of those detectors dealers put in and charge you a fortune for. Okay, here in the back, beautiful black premium leather in this car. Also has the power side sunshades, which are nice, part of the upgraded package. Incredible quality fit and finish. I mean, this thing would have stickered in the hundred two to hundred eight thousand dollar range. So, you know, it better be pretty friggin' nice, and it is. Uh, you know, all the wood has a lovely feel to it, lovely trim around it. The, you know, little pull handles are all high quality. You get a true ashtray back there because you're probably gonna have some Hans Gruber type driving this thing. Uh, you can control your rear sunscreen and your windows and your side sunscreen. Uh, beautiful, soft, lovely leather in this car. Absolutely nice to touch. It's so supple. It's like something out of a Jag. Uh, here's a spot for a great little 9mm or even a revolver. You get some cup holders. Nice. Uh, up back there you've got your three uh, headrests with your uh, sunscreen that's retractable. Uh, you can see also um, what do you got? That little pod is part of that Parktronic system. So when you're backing up, that's visible in the rearview mirror. You can see little dots forming. And then if you're going to hit something, the whole system starts screaming at you. <clears throat> if you're sitting back here, you've also got these great little vanity mirrors to uh, powder your nose, whatever it is you need to do and uh, everything lovely. Uh, you know, and even the way the oh shit handles are built with the nice little light thing behind them that you can turn on and turn off and uh, I don't know, actually I'm sorry. <laughs> camera's showing none of that. And, all right, so, but you know, the quality that's built into this car is just fantastic. Uh, you also see it has these rear airbags here to keep everybody safe, so no problems for your Canadians on that front. Uh, I believe we do have soft closed doors. Just get them close, they suck themselves in. Uh, we also have keyless go, so if I want to lock it, yeah, of course it doesn't work for me when I'm, there it is. Key has to be close, it's probably weak. Press that little rectangle, the car will lock. Uh, just put your hand on the handle and it opens up. Also a soft closed door on the driver's, ah, the whole thing is soft closed doors, obviously. Okay, again, beautiful fit and finish on the door panels. I do love the pewter and black color combination in this car. Uh, this thing, condition-wise, is a bit of a standout among standouts, and not just in the way it was ordered when it was new, but uh, in the way it's been maintained and kept. It's all very lovely, all very well um, preserved. You know, you've got all your switches there for windows and mirrors and 
trunk release and whatnot. Uh, these switches were all new for this car. Not new in this car, but this generation Mercedes got all these switches that, frankly, Mercedes never had before. Nothing that looked like that. That was a departure for them. Uh, here's your seat controls for the 83-way power seats. They're uh, ventilated and heated. Uh, you see you've got memory one, two, three, and then this brilliant little thing the Mercedes engineers did. Uh, you see the little seat with the R on it. If I light that up, I can use my seat control uh, to adjust the passenger seat. So if some, you know, inconsiderate nincompoop left it in a weird position where it's not symmetrical, uh, you, you can sit there and get it back to the position you want it to be in. <clears throat> All right, let's fire this thing up. So, foot on the brake. Nice big growl out of that V8 when you crank it up. Really does have a nice ominous feel to it. I'm going to try my night vision, ah, of course, only when it's dark, but uh, this whole center part of the cluster uh, is essentially a computer screen and will uh, light up with a night vision view when you press that. Uh, very nice feature for Mercedes. Uh, there you see the light control. You know, Mercedes has all this legacy design stuff, so uh, the light control in this car is really not that much different than it would have been in a 1955 model. The, you know, P, the left to do the city lights, the zero for, you know, straight up and down is off. Automatic, I guess they added that, and, you know, well after everyone else. Pull once for front fog lights, pull twice for rear fog lights, and, uh, you know, all working as it should. Have a little electronic parking brake there. I, I guess that's a sign of luxury cars now, not having one that you have to pull manually. Uh, you've got your uh, cruise control stock over there where you're probably going to mistake it for your turn signal. Uh, there's your uh, actual turn signal and wipers and that sort of thing. Uh, you've got a multifunction wheel with beautiful leather stitching on it uh, where you can go through and you got voice command, which won't work for me, but won't we'll try it. Uh, but, you know, you can go through on this um, uh, driver information system and, you know, do what you need to do. Zero messages, all fine. And uh, there you go, just 76,000 miles on this thing. And a very nicely laid out instrument cluster uh, with beautiful wood and leather on the wheel. Lovely, probably faux leather up there on the dash, but looks terrific. And uh, again, befitting the price tag this car had. Uh, over here, you've got uh, Mercedes-Benz command unit, cockpit management, and data system. Uh, it's pretty easy to use in this, better than the iDrive and the BMW. Uh, this is your mouse or joystick or whatever you want to call it. Here you can see we're going through different... Uh, we got blend, we got satellite radio, let's see what we got. God, Celine Dion, vomit. Uh, anyway, um, you know, it works pretty good. You can push your joystick up to get up here, go into audio. You can go through the different stuff you got. And if you can't entertain yourself with the options on this thing, then you're probably an irritating person. Uh, what do we got here? We've got, uh, this is the Airmatic. Let me turn this down again. Uh, the aromatic suspension, so I can raise the car by pressing that. It's going to lift itself up and uh, make it so we can, uh, you know, get over any implements in the road. Very nice stuff. Uh, this is your electronic stability program. It's a traction control. You can turn it on and off. Why you would in this car turn it off, I have no idea. Uh, you can turn off your parking beepers if they're annoying you. Uh, this thing is neat. This will angle the screen towards the driver or the passenger. Uh, depending on how you need to see it. And of course, beneath that is your dimmer. Uh, down here, beautiful wood that stretches across the dash. Lovely, nice, a nice little analog clock there. Some direct access buttons for the uh, cruise control, which are sorry, cruise control for the climate control, which is quite appreciated. Under here, you got a uh, CD changer and dash with a little card thing if you have cards uh, down here you got a real ashtray so if Hans is driving he can smoke you got some cup holders you've got the secondary control panel here with your uh, radio back button uh, this runs your dynamic seats and massage seats we're gonna get that going for a minute let's get those things on 
fast and vigorous, lovely. Uh, and down here, what do we got? Your navigation, so that'll pop up there. Uh, you've got uh, the rear view camera, nice. Uh, Mercedes metal weird electric column shifter, you know, they do that to get the shifter out of the center console to give you more room, so it's fine, but I don't know, I find it a little weird, I've just never liked it. I, I mean, obviously it, it's completely irrelevant to the world, you put it in drive, you forget about it, but uh, it's just a little bit of a strange thing up there. Uh, comfort sport setting on the transmission, this will lower the rear headrests. Uh, this star, that's a programmable button, you can make it do whatever you want using the command button. Uh, this one is running the rear sunscreen, which is otherwise uh, uh, some kind of hidden command deep inside the uh, command unit there. Uh, this is a mute button, your volume knob down here, and uh, you've got uh, on to turn the whole system on. Uh, this little egg-shaped thing here, you pop it open, that gives you your keypad. If you want to dial the telephone from that or tune the radio, you can. Uh, let's try the, um, let's try the damn voice command, so here we go. 94.5. Well, let's see if we get something better than Celine Dion. You too. I don't know. It depends on the mood. Sometimes they just make me want to throw up. Uh, in here, you've got. Um what do you have? This little Bluetooth accessory is nice. It's in already. It's installed, and that will let you connect Bluetooth to the car. Uh, we have a secondary center console beneath it that's air conditioned. So if you want to put a tuna sandwich in there, it'll keep it kind of cool. Uh, over here, we got a glove box with some books and emergency sunroof tool and iPod connector. And, you know, all very nice stuff. And I love this wood steering wheel. It just feels very luxurious. I suppose up here, I'll give you this real quick. Self-dimming mirror, home link garage door. Uh, you've got a uh, place to put your sunglasses, all very lovely, and uh, works as it should. And I'll tell you this, man, the 221s, this generation, uh, it really has been a reliable car, at least for me. I mean, we, we've never had one bite us in the rump, as we sometimes do on other S-Classes or SLs or certainly BMWs with V8s in them. Uh, you know, no big repairs, no surprises. You know, you know, put a valve cover gasket on it or, oh, well, there we go. We got to check our tire pressure. At least we know that system's working. Probably picked up a nail. But, uh, you know, they've been very reliable. They've done the job for us. They haven't uh, come back and, you know, hurt us on any kind of, you know, oh my God, it needs a transmission or, you know, the flux capacitor died and it's $1,200 for Mercedes. It's all been pretty standard stuff. Uh, I sold a bunch of these things and never really had anyone moan about anything. So uh, I have to say, maybe Mercedes-Benz got their quality control a bit uh, better on these cars. I mean, you know, there's no seven. This is first year. It could theoretically be problematic, but certainly doesn't uh, doesn't show any signs. Went through the inspection with flying colors, and uh, you know, if it's like every other one we've had, then it should be a pretty damn good car. I love being stuck behind this oversized load. You know, I, I want to bring up the jerk merge, that thing where you're kind of going to the right lane, you're you know, trying to get to make a corner, the interstate, you know, maybe you leave a little room in the car in front of you and some nitwit in a Kia Soul, you know, and maybe with their signal on, you know, just to be douches about it, will come flying into this little spot at 107 and then slam the brakes like they've done some, you know, I don't know, the hoonigan maneuver. And I think think that it should honestly incur the death penalty. I really do believe that. I think maybe not even with a check tires yet, 29. That's not good. We'll see if it keeps going down. <laughs> <laughs> the dealership quickly. But anyway, the death penalty. I don't even know if you need a trial. You know, that thing where they, they, there's some movie where Sylvester Stallone was a judge and he would just, you know, kill people on the spot if they broke the law after adjudicating them on the side of the road. And I think the jerk merge should get that same treatment. All right, so let's give it a little hammer before our tire goes down. Listen to that V8. And man, I mean, a steady, beautiful, torquey pull. Uh, you know, every S-Class is just designed to be a big, powerful Q-ship. And uh, this one with that 550 motor, what a leap forward for Mercedes. And what a beautiful ride. I mean, it is so, 
it's hard to explain. It's I, you know, how you can be so detached from sound and vibration. Yeah, they pipe in the V8 sound a little bit, but I mean, there's just zero vibration. There's zero, you know, bumps or bruises on the road, and yet at the same time, you get this terrific road feel, and uh, you know, the engineering, the feedback to the steering wheel, it's so epically well balanced between, you know, detached luxury and driver feel and precision that you know kudos to the Benz engineers on that one they did a hell of a job making this car uh, just a fantastic driver so anyway here it is 2007 Mercedes-Benz S550 AMG Sport not an AMG car AMG Sport package doesn't give you the engine just the uh, uh, you know the appearance package uh, 76,000 miles beautiful car inside and out nice colors nice options uh, you know they're not all created equal there are a lot of lease specials out there that were you know eighty eight thousand dollar window stickers and don't have all the goodies on them uh, this one was not it's pretty well equipped from new so uh, you know probably 10 15 grand more than your base price uh, if you have an interest give us a call 239-298-8000 on the web at aenaples.com. Thank you so much for having a look. We appreciate it. I'm going to go check the tires in this thing, and uh, we'll see you with the next one. Take care.